There's a rule in my research group. We, report, we reward the people who come on time by starting on time. So the others are going to miss out. And in particular today, we're so happy to have you here. And as you can tell, at 8.30 in the morning, some people didn't know we had that rule. So I can imagine that in the next hour, um, we'll be filling up. Today is the second workshop in a series of workshops that are going to go on for the next three years. Um, sponsored by the, it's a combination of the Institute of Medicine and the National Research Council. Forum on Promoting Children's Affective, Behavioral, and Cognitive Health. And today's the second workshop in this series about harvesting the scientific investment that we've already made in prevention science and looking towards the future. The first workshop highlighted the major successes in the field of prevention. And we were lucky enough to really have the parents of prevention. In 1987, there were only 14 evidence-based interventions that had at least a year's efficacious data. And by the year 2000, we had more than 200 efficacious intervention. There's been an exponential explosion in the field of evidence-based interventions. But now that we have all these programs, either certified by CDC or NREP, there's actually 13 bodies out there validating evidence-based interventions. What are we going to do? Are we going to have a million different programs? Because if we have 200 now, we'll have 1,000 five years from now. How are we going to harvest the information, the experience, the learnings that have gone on at the local, state, and national level. And in particular, there's four real driving forces right now that prioritize that we should examine these. First, the federal mandates by the Accountable Care Act and the mental health parity legislation. How do they influence what we do and shift and open up whole new venues for prevention? Second, the de decreased funding for prevention in the Department of Education and at SAMHSA. The substantial experience nationally that agencies have had at every level, whether they're for-profit, non-profit, state, or federal, with the challenges in implementing prevention. And finally, how are we going to balance between improving public health and providing remedial services with those with indicated or selected needs. These challenges are facing every agency, every researcher today in America. So this particular workshop, we want to focus on bridge spanners. Harvesters of the information and experiences already there in evidence-based intervention and specialists with skills in technology and methodology who are going to really hopefully open up our potential strategies and implementation plans in at least four sectors. And these are the four sectors we're going to focus on in the next two days. Healthcare, social welfare, schools, juvenile, and criminal justice. And our goal in here and um, the agenda is established so that we're going to get a few stimulus talks. And this morning, we have a blue ribbon panel. We have all we have are blue ribbon panels in the next two days. But after each one of these stim stimulating talks, we're going to have a couple of hours of discussion in a format where you are asked to really focus on this question within the sectors that you signed up for, and I think everybody in this room is either signed up or will sign up by their feet will do the walking, what are the actionable initiatives that the federal, state, and local agencies and the research community should prioritize to move that needle for the public health broad diffusion and implementation of evidence-based prevention in this country? What are the actionable initiatives? That should be the guiding question 
although you'll see it framed in three specific ways in your groups. And we have some fabulous leaders in each of the fields. David Chambers from National Institute of Mental Health for the healthcare sector, Shep Kellum for schools. Um, and now I'm gonna miss my names for our uh, Larry Plankins, Plankin, Palinkas for um, child welfare, who are gonna lead these discussions during the discussion time. Tomorrow morning, we'll get a brief wrap up, and then we have another day of stimulus talks, um, in particular from Bruce Cherpita and from the methodolog methodologists and technologists who are driving us in new directions. We're not gonna spend the day on introductions, but in advance, let me thank you for both your contributions these next two days and your experiences that you're bringing to bear because our goal is really the health and well-being of children's American children's children and families. And with that, let me introduce Costella Green, who's going to um, chair the first panel. She's the Division Director of Community Programs at the Center for Substance Abuse Prevention, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services, and um, she's going to be the coordinator of our first panel. Costella, thank you.